Welcome to the Non-Essential Podcast. I'm Steve Gibson. I'm Ben Matlock. And I had practiced like a really cheesy French accent to like start on like all day because I was bored. And then I was like chickened out at the last minute. That's probably a good so, call. I wouldn't. Probably. It's like. It was like a Jacques Cousteau thing. You would just like, but... you would just hear me leave the room with like <laughs> the, with the recording still going, but just completely <laughs> just abandon hear, like, you muffled, at that point. Like, curse words in the back God, yeah, fucking stupid. he's fucking stupid yeah that, that would have been a shitty intro well it's, it's yeah. way it's way better to say that you were going to do it <laughs> as an the intro key to comedy is to not make a joke it's to say you were going to make a joke yeah exactly <laughs> like man it would have been really great if i had done that even <laughs> though i totally could you, like you still could do that like you could be like hang on let's re- restart the recording but instead, we're going to just talk about just, what this show could yeah. have been. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to point out that I spend an actual, like, measurable part of my day practicing terrible accents for no reason. Well, I mean, you know, the, that's, the, that's right? the American way with accents. <laughs> like, there's no American who, like, does a convincing French accent. It's always uh-uh. just that generic... Yeah, there's a ton of like European actors that I have no fucking clue are European until you see them in an interview and you're going, what the fuck? Well, it's, it, well, it's really weird when you got like a guy like Daniel Day Lewis, who like in some roles sounds more American than anybody on the planet. Like just the most American voice ever. Gangs in New York and There Will Be Blood. It's just like... F- like anytime you hear oi am or some shit like that it's like <laughs> god damn he's american as fuck and then you hear him actually talk and, like, and it's like oh no he's not no you're right he's a goddamn wizard <laughs> and so problem. kudos to you rest of the worlders that can actually do american accents when yeah shout out to uh, shout out to friend of the show daniel day lewis <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, so the non-essential podcast for those of you who are listening for the first time what we are is a weekly show where we bring two completely different totally random stories uh, that the other person doesn't know we're going to talk about to the table um hopefully it's always something interesting sometimes it's weird sometimes it's like uh, gruesome sometimes all sorts of shit sometimes it's not interesting sometimes no. we really fuck up and those are <laughs> those are bad weeks um, did you hear about the stock market crash of 83 it wasn't nearly as catastrophic as any of the other ones i have a uh, story about insider trading but to really get into it i have to explain (laughs) everything about insider trading there you go that's even better right yeah um that's not what we got this week uh Mm. last week um i i told you i was like trying to find a another chunk of japanese myths and i i failed and luckily, I was saved by Ohio and the crazy shit you people get up to over there. <laughs> what can I say? We like to drink. <laughs> we like to drink and hunt big-headed people in the woods. It's, it's felt weird all week, like, promoting the show, being like, and this thing from Ohio, where I think everybody's going to assume that that's what I'm talking about, being from Ohio. Well, I think and... as someone who's never been to Ohio, I'm an expert, so... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> turns out you know as much as i do so. yeah. <laughs> yeah um but i actually you know i told you i was having trouble finding some good japanese urban legends and stuff um but i was tenacious this week i i, w- I would not be denied because it's it's a lot easier doing that than to write down a whole historical story <laughs> for the show <laughs> every week um so i didn't find a. Uh, I, I, it's kind of hard to find like on the first episode it was kind of these urban legends that are very uh if not modern they have a modern take to them uh you know so we, we kind of talked about you know the slit-mouthed woman and stuff like that and it was always like if you're walking the streets at night these creatures found you or whatever um and this week it's not really so much like urban legends like that but kind of more these are about like specific japanese ghosts and demons and kind of their story and there's you noticed and we kind of noticed it in the first episode but it definitely became clear here that a lot of the japanese ghosts are always like vengeful women um (laughs) 
Right. I I won't make a comment on why that is because I don't know why that is. But yeah, yeah. I was I have a note here that just says like I'm not sure what they get up to in Japan where like their comeuppance is always like a pissed off woman's spirit. Um, but that's that tends to be a theme. Not all of them, but definitely a theme. Maybe Japanese men are just more um aware of how shitty we can be and like how much we deserve to be like avenged by the female population you know it's interesting you say that because i'm i'm doing a little thing today with this one um where you know there's not a lot to these stories because it's more about like what are these creatures you know um it's almost like an enemy glossary in like a video game or something uh but you know there are there are little stories to them so we're gonna read i'll read the stories to you what what little there is and then we'll talk about like what the moral of the story could possibly be (laughs) um sounds fun because some of them are not uh you you it's easy to say like well maybe the guys are just dicks but they're a lot more random than that uh there's definitely those but this one is a good example of you know good luck trying to guess the moral um so this is a kiyohime um Kiyohime was a young woman scorned by her lover who had lost interest in her. Uh, the, it's like, it always hurts to, you know, when that person, yeah, you, that special person just, you know, loses that gets bored. spark in their eye for you. Um, realizing she had been dumped, Kiyohime followed him to a river and transformed into a serpent to chase after his boat. Naturally fucking scared, he sought refuge in a temple where the monks hid him under a bell monks are smart um they know what to do when women turn to serpents yeah kiyohime now being a serpent found him by his scent and began banging on the bell and then breathed fire onto it uh this Uh, melted the bell and killed her former lover yeah i think so so what is the moral of this story uh i say women be shopping no uh (laughs) <laughs> it's uh, yeah, going after a whole new crowd of listeners now yeah the yeah. sinbad crowd <laughs> like, I, like i don't know what i guess you can never ever break up with a woman don't date a woman who can become a dragon right like well i mean that is pretty sound advice like it's kind of like that crappy movie i don't know i say crappy a lot of people liked it but the, my like super ex-girlfriend or something yeah where yeah i mean well same it, deal I don't know if I like that moral, though, because if, like, your girl could turn into a dragon, that could be really cool and useful. Um, So maybe that's just, like, something you should know on the first date, and then you can plan your break. Like, if you do need to break up, you can plan ahead. Um, Because it seemed like... (laughs) Is Lancelot available? (laughs) Like, this guy was kind of caught off guard, where he was like, well, you know, that that was unpleasant, but time to move on to the next chapter of my life. Holy shit, she's coming after me. (laughs) <laughs> holy shit she's transforming yeah like that's what i'm it's like babe i think we should see other people it's it's not you it's me but uh, i'm gonna go fishing no <laughs> you're not coming with me no you're not turning into a snake fuck where are the monks at and... <laughs> guys you gotta hide me get under this bell you know, like <laughs> thanks that's not a <laughs> hiding a... spot <laughs> not against magical dragon snake women no. this is not hide and go seek this is i i'm gonna <laughs> die if like i gotta get out of here um this next one isn't uh about a woman necessarily this is a shooting doji uh shooting doji is a 50 foot tall red demon with five horns and 15 eyes um japan is way into uh excess i guess when it comes to like yeah, body parts I- you know, the interesting thing about that is there's a lot of, like, monsters and demons that are, like, shown having either, like, huge eyes or, like, a whole large number of eyes because apparently it's, like, visually creepy. But right. if you think about, like, biology and that kind of stuff, eyes are, like, always every animal's weakest point. So if you had a shitload of them, that's just, like, yeah, like, stab me here, 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 and here. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, yeah, just chuck sand. You'll get in something. <laughs> um so this demon, like, they, that's basically the description of it. Um, the whole legend of this demon was uh, that it was supposedly killed when two warrior, warriors infiltrated his lair, disguised as mountain priests, to free some kidnapped women, um, who you can only assume would go on to become vengeful spirits regardless. So 
Uh, good job. <laughs> you didn't rescue me fast enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, the demon offered them a banquet of human flesh and blood, and the warriors offered uh, Shun Do- Shun Doji um, some drugged sake. Once uh, the demon passed out, they cut off his head, killed the other demons, and freed everyone. Um, so the moral, if you're a human and some jerk is being a demon around you and shit and fucking with you, um, is get them drunk and then fuck them up. Uh, if you're a demon or a human, I say you don't drink with people you don't know and trust. (laughs) Well, that's what I was initially when you said, oh, the warriors disguise themselves as mountain priests. So if you're going against a demon, it doesn't really fucking matter. But apparently it does. Yeah, because it's it like, like, you have swords, oh shit. But if you're just priests, it's like, I guess, but, like, oh, you're paying tribute. Then that kind of begs the question, is, are their priest-demon relationships different than what I'm used to in, like, Western Christianity? Like, I you think, think that uh, a priest would be the last thing you'd want to disguise yourself as to go, like, just chill with a demon and have somebody like... Hey, he drinks some of this. I'm a priest. It's it's good stuff. I think it's the idea is that like it's an offering of like please don't kill all of our women. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, you know, they, they, there's not a lot of lessons to these legends. I think like people were just bored. So, <laughs> a lot of these, I think, origin and not just in Japan, but just everywhere. Yeah, originated from like we like to say that they're all like have a grain of truth to them. But I like to picture the first person that told the story as one of those people that was like, yeah, so my wife went missing and I went to this cave and got her back. And everybody's like, okay. And he's like, well, okay. So there was a demon in the cave. And like, you know, one of those things where like they realize halfway through their story that it's not a good story. So then they start making shit up, thinking they're making a good story up. But then at the end, you just get something like this that makes no yeah real sense like <laughs> yeah it's really just like it wouldn't that be cool if that happened <laughs> isn't it neat when warriors kill shit the next one is called a uh, yamauba uh yamauba are considered to be old women who were marginalized by society and forced to live in the mountains so uh, like all old women right which is yeah <laughs> i'll just spoil it my the moral i take from this one is don't send old women into the mountains um <laughs> send them into the sea yeah well <laughs> if you send them into the mountains they apparently become ogresses who eat human flesh there's not there's not much stories to these ones they it's just always like they go after your children but they can all they'll eat anyone really they just seem to prefer children well they're more tender yeah the the, the notable thing about these creatures is that they uh also have mouths under their hair so if you have pets and you know how annoying having hair in your mouth is these fucking women have that feeling all the time no wonder they're angry yeah it's like of course i would be a monster too like i if you get cat hair in my mouth like i'm having a bad day so again this is just one of those like we we need to we need to make another monster (laughs) it's like i don't know if i would be afraid of old women in the mountains well yeah and it kind of makes me wonder like is it common i was joking about it but did they commonly like send old women to the mountains like you hag you're uglying up the place how about Uh you go into the mountains and don't come back i mean if you go into like ancient societies not just japan but you know japan was definitely one of them they did a lot of fucked up shit to people they kind of cut off you know like in some ways it's like better off if you just got sent to the mountains to become a monster Next one is uh this this returns to our our good uh women don't like to be fucked with thing. Uh Uji no Hashime uh was a woman who wanted to become a demon to kill her husband, the new woman he had fallen for and all their relatives. Well, of course. One this is overkill and two you don't need to become a demon to do that. <laughs> no, we've had other stories already this uh <laughs> this podcast that kind of outline those but she Steps. was yeah so she was determined uh to pull this off she bathed in the uji river for 21 days divided her hair into five horns which is probably going to become an actual metal look uh in due time <laughs> i was picturing uh jim carrey from ace ventura too when he's when he's getting fucked f- with by the, yeah uh, and they fuck with his hair and it's like yeah great man fucks with the hair 
Great movie. Very offensive in 2018, it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so she divided her hair into five horns, painted her body red, and then went on a legendary killing spree. Um, besides her targets, anyone who saw her died of fear. Um, so what do you think the moral is to that? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what lessons can you take from this? Like, we got to yeah, learn from history here, Steve. Don't cheat on your new wife if she's, well, you probably shouldn't. To be anyway, fair, it anyway. doesn't say that he cheated on her. It said he fell in love with someone else. True. And, and it's like, you know, maybe it's to, maybe he emotionally cheated on her. Um, but we, I like to think that like, cause you, you talk about, she wanted to become a demon. So she'd like put her hair into horns and painted herself. So basically she became a, like a WWE wrestler, the demon. Like, yeah. You're right. <laughs> it was like, there was a WWE wrestler called uh, the boogeyman. And like he would, he did all the shit you would expect. He like painted his face or whatever. And then he would just like eat worms. And it was like, not much came of that wrestler. Uh, <laughs> but he, would, he would also hit himself in the head with a clock. It, it was, uh, that was, the, for me, that was the golden age of wrestling. And that was like five years <laughs> ago. Like it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, again, like apparently Japanese myths were just all made by men who were fucking either terrified of women or ending relationships. Um, so the only morals I can take from a lot of these is like, don't date women, but if you do date a woman, never stop dating them. <laughs> like, that's, that's about the only lesson I can take. Um, a couple more here. Uh, so the Oiwa is a Oiwa or not the Oiwa is Oiwa is just one woman. Uh, she was married to a Ronin. If you don't know what a Ronin is, it's a masterless samurai, uh, named, uh, Amon. Um, but he decided at some point there's a, there's a few variations of the story, but the prevailing theme is that he ultimately he decided to, uh, he wanted to marry a rich locals, uh, daughter who had ended well, sure. up falling for him. Uh, so in order to end his first marriage to Oiwa, he tried to poison her. It failed to kill her, but it ended up somehow leaving her horribly disfigured where her hair fell out and her left eye began to droop. Um, because you got to make it a monster somehow. So he poisoned her with the same acid that the Joker fell into, it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, it, maybe he should have learned to apply poison. You don't do it by, like, throwing it at their face. Um Realizing what was done to her, uh, she hysterically tries to attack with a sword, but in the uh, scuffle, she ends up uh, killing herself with it. Um, <laughs> it it's, uh, you know, so you, the revenge didn't quite work out. Yet. Yet. So what fucks with Amon is that everywhere he goes, he sees her ghostly face everywhere. Um he, with the you know horrible disfigurements and stuff and when he marries his new bride he sees oiwa in her in his new bride's face and in the fearful panic he cuts her head off um oiwa's spirit continues to haunt him relentlessly and by the time everything all the murderous betrayals and plots he's put together are revealed he welcomes death at that point um, there's actually a old Japanese play about that. That actually sounds pretty interesting, but this, that's the basic legend of it. Um, <laughs> I was hoping you were going to say like every, you know, he continually sees her face on other people and keeps decapitating him. And then one day he goes to shave <laughs> and he looks in the mirror and it's like, Oh no, <laughs> Oh no, get it off. Um, yeah. The moral to this story I think is uh divorce is hard. Uh, I, I don't or pick the better poison like don't scrimp when you <laughs> when you go to your poison dealer don't be like what's the cheapest thing you got like well and like I think in the play version like he doesn't immediately want to marry like a rich local's daughter um, that kind of happens after uh, someone try someone else tries to poison her uh, through like a facial cream or something and he like when she applies it that disfigures her and then Amon in you know ah well yeah you can't be married to a ugly... great great guy fashion he's like what the fuck yeah i got a rich local daughter i can marry i don't have to put up with this um <laughs> i love you no matter what as long as your face never gets ugly yeah you know <laughs> it's that forever kind of love unless you get Thank some fucked up lotion 
<laughs> so thank God that wasn't in Tara's wedding vows. That'd be. <laughs> <laughs> she would cut your head off. Uh, <laughs> yes. That's the lesson I'm taking. Uh, so, and the last one I got here, uh, a, little, a little shorter today. Um, but I do have another, I have another whole th- file worth of Japanese myths to bring up at a later date. But the last one for today is the demon at Agi Bridge. Um, pretty pretty basic uh, plot here, where an overconfident fella boasted that he didn't fear crossing this bridge or of the rumored demon that was said to reside there. Um, when he attempted to cross, the demon appeared to the man as a, quote, everything I found always quoted it this way, as an abandoned woman. Um, hmm. That's some phrasing. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> is somebody missing a woman? Is That's a real she, old-timey, this, like, <laughs> wow, I can't believe someone would just leave a woman here. Come with me. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, once the man was fixated on the woman, the demon transformed into a nine-foot green monster, the Hulk, I assume, and chased after him, but the man somehow got away. Unable to catch the man, the demon trans- then decided to transform into the form of his brother and actually went to his house. <laughs> in disguise, he was let in, and after a brief fight, he bit off the man's head, held it up, danced with it before the man's family, and then left. I love that he didn't kill the family. Yeah, I mean, well, the family didn't boast about the bridge. It was just... It's a fucking bridge. <laughs> well that's what i was wondering there is like so no one walked across this bridge until this dude right that's what i was gonna or maybe it's okay to walk across it which would prove in and of itself that you're not afraid to walk across it as long as you don't boast about it but then that brings you to wonder who's boasting about crossing a bridge that everybody else is crossing <laughs> like <laughs> now, that's, that's next time i better. get to a bridge i'm gonna like stop everybody before we go across it back now guys I'm not afraid to cross this bridge. I always make sure if I'm walking anywhere with friends and we hit a bridge in my town, I stop them and I was like, hey, pussies, check this out. <laughs> and then, but and yeah, so I I'm on a lot of shit the, lists with demons. I appreciate the demons' tenacity and also, like, it's like an end zone dance in football. You <laughs> bite the guy's head off, and <laughs> not just like the icky shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally how i see it <laughs> he's like spin, the head when he's, the, yeah, he's spinning the head like a football <laughs> it's just oh shit um so yeah the moral i guess is like one definitely don't trust somebody just because they look like your brother um you you know my Hell, brother if I, anybody that comes to my door and looks like family i think i immediately trust him less like you know my brother and he, he comes to my house and i actually try not to let him in because i don't know <laughs> it, like, dude i'm your brother that's I, why i'm not opening the door asshole sometimes i don't know what's worse the fucking nine foot green demon or my brother <laughs> um and i guess i'll always be afraid of bridges because they're fucking dangerous like, yeah, you can cross them, but just like as you're crossing them, go like, man, I'm terrified of this bridge. Be sure to grab the railing really hard and act like you're in an earthquake every time you cross a bridge. The demon I hear that lives under this thing, he's sure swell guy or girl. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, he's that demon is one great abandoned woman. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, what does an abandoned woman look like? like <laughs> yeah, because I like read it. How can it you in... visually tell it's an abandoned woman? Like, Well, there's no man, like, strong-arming her. To, like, <laughs> come here. No property of tags on her? Yeah, like, the, when I hear abandoned woman, for some reason, I just, like, like I imagined, like, like, an older woman who, like, needed help or something. But the rest of the way the story's written, it's like, you know, an attractive woman yeah, or something. So maybe she was, like, in a trash can, like, with the lid half on, like... And and why are you so stupid? Like, you cross the bridge and you're like, oh, there's a hot woman, you're like, and you don't think anything's up. It's like, oh, they, she must have heard how brave I am to walk. <laughs> well, wouldn't that make you, like feel that if you're like i'm so brave watch me cross this bridge that this hot woman is standing on like well to be fair like you know i'm somebody who would be like if you told me like there's some spooky legend behind a bridge i would walk across it but i would be i'd be terrified the whole time 
But maybe that's what this guy would like. Cause you, you'd, you know, out, outwardly, you would never admit that though. I mean, it's like, you, the you never Bloody admit Mary it, but at, the, but at that point you're crossing the bridge. It's <laughs> ancient Japan. So you got to have a sword. Well, I, would have, I would have my sword out. That I would attack the woman immediately. Yeah, any, <laughs> any fucking thing you see, it could be like a leaf is fluttering down in the wind, and you just chop the shit out of it. <laughs> There's an abandoned woman. She came right for me. I had to cut her head off. What do you mean uh, abandoned? Well, it was right next to the uh, abandoned bucket and the abandoned... Well, see, the rest of the stuff works, though. I can't think of anything else. Like, that's the one thing in the world that doesn't work with the word abandoned. Yeah, like yeah, woman. Yeah, there's right. no such like, thing. You could even like an abandoned dog. I get or abandoned shoes, sure. But well, like an abandoned a- woman would be someone who like, like the the only way that works to me is like on a really personal level. Like, oh, you heard her husband just left her, uh, abandoned right. her or but something. Then you couldn't but you can't tell, tell that. that from a bridge, right? <laughs> Unless she had a sign around her neck, yeah. like, no longer want, please take. <laughs> Abandon. <laughs> will be household woman for food. Uh, so yeah, to all the Great. abandoned women out there, uh, you you know, thanks for listening. I guess <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know what you what you say to an abandoned woman. I, yeah, well, like I said, it's it's just now that I, I'm thinking more and more about it, and it's literally the one noun <laughs> I can think of in the world out of all the nouns that it doesn't work with the word abandon. Well, I mean, man, obviously too, but that's now we're you know getting the same thing. But like, <laughs> abandoned yeah. man sounds like a fucking Todd McFarlane character or something. Like, well, I think it's it's kind of like one of those um, like Hong Kong crime or drama movie or like. Yeah, Kung Fu action movies or something. Yeah, that, like that. sounds like, like I'd watch the shit out of the abandoned man. Uh, yeah, that sounds like some like fucking like Korean serial killer movie yeah. or something. It's like um, well, it's, there's the the man with no name, so maybe the abandoned man is like the sequel. <laughs> the man who has a name, but anyone who cares left. <laughs> right. So yeah, that's wow. that's me this week. This week. Well, my story this week is about a woman that was not abandoned. Um, so great segue there. Uh, Violet Jessup was born in Argentina in October of 1887. Uh, her parents were William and Catherine Jessup, who had immigrated to Argentina from Ireland, which I thought was kind of interesting because it's <laughs> not something that like I would picture in the 1800s. You being in Ireland, and be like, let's go to Argentina. But uh, it's a big, it's a hot market in Argentina. Like, I guess uh, the weather there is sure the hell better than in Ireland. But uh, no offense to Ireland, I, <laughs> we don't I'd love know to that. go to Ireland. But, but well, that's true. Uh, anyway, um, the couple had had nine children, but only six survived. But out of those, Violet was the eldest. Um, and the only reason I mention that is because, like. <laughs> One of these stories, the way they told it, they're like, oh, she was a survivor from birth because three of her eight other siblings died. It's like, well, this is the 1800s. That's actually a pretty good mortality rate on (laughs) children. But uh, when she was young, she came down with tuberculosis and the doctor said that that would be fatal. But of course, it wasn't. Otherwise, my story this week. So they killed the doctor for lying. Yeah. Fuck you, doctor. No, you want to know what is fatal? lies she became a vengeful spirit and haunted the shit out of that doctor even though she didn't die but uh, (laughs) everywhere he looked he saw tuberculosis (laughs) till he cut his own head off there you go Um, when she was 16 her father died from complications during surgery so the uh, family moved back to england Uh, violet attended school and helped raise her sister while her mother worked as a steward at sea uh, but when her mother became ill, Violet began to also work at sea as a steward. Um, according to the Wikipedia article, it, it said that she was so attractive that she had to dress down in order to get her first job. Because Damn. I guess sea stewards are supposed to be ugly. Like, I've never heard that problem. <laughs> like, <laughs> nope, you're, you're too attractive to be a, too to a servant on our ship. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Typically, I thought in those kind of positions, that's what they they wanted. But whatever, man. man what's talk about a great problem? Like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, I can certainly identify with that. I've got to dress down all the time. That's why I look that way in pictures. 
Can you imagine though, like, oh man, if you did an interview and they were like, sorry, I just wouldn't be able to focus if you worked here. You're too fucking well, beautiful. Shit, I, there's companies today that I could imagine saying that, but then they said, but what are you doing later tonight? Well, well, what's great about that is like, you know, that would be the other end of sexual harassment where right. it's like <laughs> a lot of times people like get hired and then they, they use that hiring as a loophole to harass someone. But it would be a totally different, like, the only reason you're not getting the job is because I want to fuck you. (laughs) Right. Like, man, I mean, I'm okay with sexual harassment, but man, this would go way over the line if I hired you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So that's why I had to put that in there. Wikipedia said it, so it must be true. Yeah. Um, Her first job was with the Royal Mail Line aboard the Orinoco that's a weird name for a boat. But uh, a few years later, she took a position with the White Star Lions aboard the Olympic, um, which a year after she be- began work on the Olympic, it was in September of 1911, the ship left port in Southampton and then pretty soon after collided with the Navy vessel HMS Hawk. Uh, the <laughs> Turns out the two ships had been running parallel to each other when the Hawk suddenly veered into the side of the Olympic so the crushed. hawk fucked that up. And she was so fucking attractive that the captain of the hawk was like, whoa, look at her. Crap. Crash. <laughs> I think that's what. <laughs> captain, you got to pay attention. I am paying attention. Look at her. She's too beautiful to sail. Hey, baby, can I have your number? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, she's not hearing me. Honk the horn. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So it turns out the ocean also not a place for catcalling. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, uh, there were no f- fatalities, uh, and thanks to the Olympics' watertight, compartmentalized design, the ship made it back to port. Uh, but the British government blamed the Olympic for the wreck, saying that the displacement from the huge propellers is what caused. You the should have known better. Into. You can't bring beautiful people onto the ocean <laughs> like that. <laughs> your fault it's like it's just despite like numerous witnesses saying that the hawk just suddenly like they were traveling fine and then it turned and like rammed head first into the side they say well that's your fault it's, look how fucking hot like she how, is man you can't do that <laughs> that's how government works though they can never can ever accept blame for this like yeah it's pretty pretty clear cut we turned into the side of you but it's it's your fault yeah <laughs> so just, just um, accept blame for this so we can go on of course, there was a massive legal battle, and uh, the White Star Line was incurring all sorts of like debt because of this. Uh, but they were able to turn it into a pretty good PR piece, because if you're familiar, a lot of people should be or will be, but the Olympic was the first of three sister ships in a line that would include the Titanic. So these ships were said to be unsinkable, and the fact that a Navy warship had rammed right into the side of her and did not sink her or cause any casualties kind of helped, like, prove, like, see, look how fucking yeah. tough our boats are. Doesn't the, Isn't that the shit, though, that, like, a Navy ship can crash into this and then, like, a fucking iceberg? Iceberg, <laughs> right. It's like goddamn, a goddamn fucking ocean popsicle what... carved us the fuck up. This is what happens as soon as humans start to boast about how they're better than nature or... Anything just like just, that. just basically to like claim anything just so like you you can't put anything on the ocean and say it's unsinkable that's just not true right except maybe like a cork from a bottle of wine even that sinks when it gets i don't know i'm sure there's something that's unsinkable but you probably can't try to wrap some it. fucking chains and some cement shoes around anything i'll prove you wrong friend <laughs> Um, so, you know, the Olympic, like it, it sustained this damage, but it would end up getting repaired and go on and like be used over a long course of, you know, what these crews, these were like luxury cruise lines. Obviously everybody's familiar with the Titanic. The Olympic was the first. And then there was a, Oh yeah. Titanic, my favorite boat, Britannia or something, uh, Britannica or something that came out. All three of them were supposed to be, you know, luxury cruise liners yeah um and so the olympic would continue on after this and have a long career although i did notice i didn't bother looking it up because it's not germane to the story but it did say that this uh incident with the hawk was the first collision that the olympic would suffer so apparently <laughs> it ran into some other boats and stuff too maybe maybe they're not wrong to blame the olympic even if it's not true <laughs> there's just a pattern yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> so about six months after surviving her first major mishap at sea, Violet transferred off of the Olympic and took a position aboard the Titanic. Oh, God. Uh, she, <laughs> she started her new job on April 10th, 1912, and on April 14th, 1912, you know so four how, days later. You, like, you know how fucked up that is to be like, this boat's dangerous. <laughs> I'm dangerous. fucking out of here. Right. And then you get on that fucking ship. Oh, God. Ship. Well, she she started her job on April 10th, and April 14th was when the Titanic hit the iceberg and sank. Uh, during the evacuation, Violet was actually called up to the ship's deck by the captain or by some of the, the higher up officers, uh, where she was instructed to like act as an example for non-English speaking women uh, who couldn't understand instructions. So like the best I could like parse out of the stuff I was reading was that they were like kind of like how the airline like always has the one stewardess that's or steward, I guess, that's giving the instructions and the one that's like miming the stuff in the background. Yeah. Yeah. So they were like, hey, you get up here and do that. And so (laughs) she did. And she like watched as people were loaded onto the lifeboats and lowered into the, you know, Atlantic. Uh, But eventually she was ordered into a lifeboat herself. They said to show the other women that it was safe. And it's like, fuck, what kind of credit did they give women back then? My boat's fucking (laughs) sinking. Like, I don't care if I don't think the lifeboat's safe. It's sure the fuck's safer than <laughs> the sinking boat I'm on, right? No, I, if... I know that you have some doubts that this is actually going to save you. <laughs> uh, I know you haven't seen a boat before, even though you're on a giant one. I mean, I suppose there's always those idiots that are like in denial, like this boat's not sinking. It, it hit a night, you know, it might be listing 45 degrees to port, but it'll right itself, right? <laughs> but uh well but the, anyway you know as some as somebody who is just a passenger on this i think the captain's overreacting <laughs> right we'll be fine yeah there's bodies floating around down on the bottom decks because they've already drowned but that doesn't affect me i thought you were gonna go the other way with it where they weren't going to save her because she was too beautiful <laughs> we can't put you on the boat everybody put... will want to jump you <laughs> they'll want to throw you overboard anyway you're too hot <laughs> But I imagine if a captain tells you, like, oh, get on the boat as an example, you're like, thank you, about fucking time. Right. So she got onto the lifeboat, and there's there's some accounts, and a lot of them are from her, because, of course, you, if you survive something like the Titanic, you tend to talk about surviving something like the Titanic Bragger. for the rest of your life. <laughs> but uh, I guess as, like, the boat was about ready to be lowered, somebody has just, like, thrust a baby at her and was like, here, have a baby. Um, <laughs> that's, like what, you know, that's, a, that's a really tragic story and like for some reason my fucked up mind just imagined a quarterback like throwing a perfect spiral to spiral. her it's like, yeah they were already out on the seat it's like catch it's like it's well, kind of like throwing the me. bouquet i'm an evil person but i'm just like red 18 well see now i'm picturing because it's a baby no and it's it violet 18 that's right <laughs> but it's a boat full of women and it's a baby so now i'm picturing like the bouquet toss at a wedding where you just toss the baby at the boat and the women like scrambled to see who was the one that caught it and whoever catches the baby is going to be the next one to get pregnant or something i don't know that's usually how they decide that <laughs> <laughs> that's how it happens so she spent about a day aboard this lifeboat apparently with this baby before they were rescued by the uh carpathia it's the boat that rescued like all the survivors or most of them um but once aboard the the boat violet says a woman just grabbed the baby from her and ran off without saying a word and she just assumes it's the baby's mother so like i like the follow through on that like, you kept that fucking baby with you for like how long you said like a day a day so all right well so i guess it's theoretic that the mother was on a different life raft but then why didn't she have the baby like where did the baby come from maybe there was just like that in that panic i mean there's no guarantee you're gonna get on a lifeboat and so they got one and then it was like well give me back my fucking kid you hope you you hope it's not like most of the things i read it sounds like a relatively true story where where the um specifics were a little murky so you know whatever but but anyway, I just threw that in there because you can't not mention, like, a baby handoff. So after uh, getting rid of this baby, I guess, and making her way back to land, uh, she continued working in the the sea industry, which is weird. You'd think after surviving, like, a near-catastrophic 
cataclysmic event. And then the Titanic, the like most cataclysmic, it really isn't, but it's the most well-known, like horrible sinking of the yeah, ship. Yeah, it was a terrible thing. And it's such a like iconic image of a tragedy. Right. You'd think you'd like hang up the towel, but apparently she didn't. Um, by 1916, a few years after the official start of World War I, uh, she was serving aboard the HMHS Britannic, which I had said earlier was the third in the White Star Line's uh, sister ships, you know, grouping. It was basically a carbon copy of the Titanic, except even a little bit bigger. Um, but being wartime, the ship had been uh, converted to for use as a uh, floating hospital and Violet was actually serving through the British Red Cross. So it was a military, it was kind of a military vessel, but it's one of those like medical, you know, yeah. civilian, whatever. Uh, so on the morning of November 12th, while cruising the Aegean Sea, the ship was rocked by an explosion. Uh, the captain immediately ordered the closure of all the watertight doors, but six compartments had already flooded, which was more extensive flooding and damage than the Titanic had suffered. Um, however, the damage wasn't enough to sink the, the Britannic. Uh, the captain decided to run the ship aground to ensure that she wouldn't sink. And, <clears throat> uh, but because the hospital staff had like opened the portholes earlier in order to like air out the infirmary and like the whatever where they were keeping people, yeah. uh, as the ship began steaming ahead, it began to take on more water through the open windows. My, my guess is it was riding lower in the water because of the right uh, gaping wound and then more water was coming in because the windows were open so that was the first problem uh, some of the staff panicked and began lowering the lifeboats uh, it sounded like there was two or three lifeboats put in the water uh, but unfortunately the ship was still moving at maximum speed when they did so the draft up of the propellers pulled these lifeboats into them killing all those on board jesus so, christ yeah <laughs> so they quickly realized wait we better not do that uh, but due to the compounding of all the problems, it wasn't the explosion per se. They think she could have survived that. But because of the windows and the boat thing probably didn't help morale. Uh, the captain realized that the ship was going to sink. Um, but it, pretty much everybody else got off the ship. Uh, Violet Jessup was one of the survivors that got off the ship. Uh, but she this gave an account. This is fishy now. Like, I don't like that she's surviving all this shit. I know. Like, they what say, was like, she really up to? What was the World War II thing? Loose lips sink ships. I think it's Jessup's sink ships. Because <laughs> yeah, good one. Yeah, let's catch. Uh -huh. <laughs> Put it on posters and print. What the fuck was uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, from her lifeboat, and she witnessed the uh, bow of the Britannic start to sag and then go a little deeper, and then you know how boats they finally hit that like critical tipping point when all of a sudden the the back end of the boat just launches like 100 feet up into the air no i don't i don't know about that because none of my <laughs> vessels ever sink I've ever oh well you're not doing it right then a lot more fun when your boat sinks <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway as the boat was going down the propellers were still moving although not at max speed anymore and just the action of the boat sinking was sucking the life raft into the boat uh she as well as pretty much everybody else saw it this happening so they jumped the hell out of the lifeboat uh, which did get smashed to pieces uh, the bow of the boat did hit her in the head as she <laughs> swam in the water but uh, she survived i don't know if she it must not have knocked her out and she got picked up by another lifeboat and whatever they said there was actually relatively few i think they said there was 30 fatalities from this incident and most of them were the people <laughs> on the original and that's relatively that few and that's like 30 fucking people 30 people but when you got a sunken blown up ship that was bigger than that titanic it, well, what's really, think, well what's really fucking scary to me is like that was the like peak of their technology at the time mm -hmm. so they thought of their shit the same way we think of like our shit now yeah where or, we're like it's infallible it, yeah you know, yeah, yeah they, they were dumb a hundred years ago but our boats our that's boats kind of now. how I feel every time they announce one of these new like Airbus, like these giant fucking airplanes that are like the size of the Empire State Building, and they're like, it's safe. And it's, it's like, like well, absolutely fucking not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that's in the air is not safe. Anything that's at sea is not safe. Like we think of, like our technology is so good, but then watch that fucking deadliest catch show and see their <laughs> rickety ass fucking just they're just rectangles of metal. 
in the ocean. Right. And it's and like sometimes in- these like I was I was watching a, a Nova, I think it was, or some show on rogue waves are called and it's a phenomenon that a lot of scientists and people didn't even think it was real until they finally were like able to witness one on like satellite but it's just these random fucking like no storm or anything waves that are like 60 feet tall or more go zooming across the ocean and I th- I can't remember what they said that they think causes it but they'll be like a solitary wave so it's not like you know Sure, before and after there'll be some kind of bigger waves because that's how water works. But it's not like oh, you're in a big storm and then the waves keep getting bigger. It's just like you're fucking sailing along and you're like, this is pretty good. Oh nope, we just got fucking crushed by sixty feet of. <laughs> we got slammed by a that, surf god. Surf god. Now I'm thinking about. It. I might have even been like two hundred feet. It was some ridiculously huge fucking. It, wave. it was a goddamn fuck you. Basically, it was. Wave. It, yeah, that's how you can see why the Greeks like invented like Poseidon as a god because it's like it's basically the ocean turning into a <laughs> vengeful god and just smacking the shit out but, of you. But they did that for like actual storms and stuff. Like that was the imagery. A rogue wave is just like that's like Poseidon playing Dark Souls and like right. just in a momentary like <laughs> fuck this. Or he farted. It yeah, just, yeah. A, a violent, angry fart. And and uh, that's the thing. This is <laughs> and back on the Britannic. It sank in about fifty-five minutes. It took the Titanic like two hours and forty-five minutes to sink. So it went down. Which which always seemed like the worst part of it to me. It was just like, yeah. You, you, are you kidding me? I've I've been well, waiting for two hours and I'm gonna die because we don't have enough boats. Right. <laughs> but that probably lends itself to what we were talking about earlier where there had to be some people who were like it's, ga- it's not that bad <laughs> if it was going to sink we'd be sunk by now yeah Uh-oh. It was, it was, I don't an remember hour this, and a half I don't remember the front of this boat being 300 feet off the water oh crap hey and the band they just fell into the fucking pit too <laughs> oh the drum guy can survive though he just rides the drum it floats I imagine yeah like, you think you keep drumming <laughs> like, yeah yeah <laughs> I you have an guys... impeccable sense of balance yes you can ride anything in the ocean <laughs> but uh so anyway she survived this so she was on <laughs> three boats one didn't sink you know in fairness the olympic didn't sink it just got rammed by a warship and then the other two but the the other common thread here other than her was that they were all the white star liners like sister ship like line of unsinkable ships yeah so but if she goes and works for another fucking cruise company after this, you'll know it's sabotage. She, uh, <laughs> she actually did continue working. Got her. For Caught C- her. You're done. No, none of her other boats sank. Or at no, least not that's that I my could find. fucking point. Is she it's was on the inside and sad. she like went to those ships and then sunk them to kill the competition. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing is she continued working for the white. You would think you would at least fucking quit working with the company that's tried to kill you three times right like oh, i thought you said she went to a different company that's what well, i was she, saying she continued for the white star line for a while then she went to the red star line and then back to the royal mail line where she had started so she, she didn't end with them but she did after the third sinking she did continue working with them for a while like I if bet. nothing else you think you'd be like <laughs> i bet it would be shady if she left right away right away yeah. off suspicion well, especially since, you know, I was reading and they said they don't know exactly what caused the explosion. Um, although they narrowed it down to two things, neither of which I don't couldn't see her being behind. They, I think it was either a torpedo or a water mine. And the, the most most of the evidence points towards they hit a mine. And to the, be water. fair, nobody saw her plant the mine. <laughs> right. <laughs> and now I'm picturing her sneaking on board with this giant, you know, orb shaped mine. Well, what's that? Nothing. It's my globe. It's a sea basket. <laughs> can you tell me where we're headed and can I get there for a few days <laughs> before you get there? But uh, I guess during her time after all the sinking, she completed two separate like around the world cruises. Like I, you would think that this chick loves boats more than me. It's right. Like crazy. I love the ocean and I love the sea, but like after like or sailing and that kind of stuff. But if I survived the Titanic, that'd be enough for me. But then if I still was like, well, fuck it, I need money. Like, that's the other thing. It's like, what do you know? That's like the one job she's ever had. Then after the second one gets like exploded and sinks, and then I almost get like chopped in the face by the propeller. 
think at that point I'm like, yeah, I've I've had my share, but yeah, uh, she she didn't. Um, she of course eventually retired, and she died of congestive heart failure in 1971. Which, like, when I'm doing these stories that all originated in the 1800s, and then they died almost in my lifetime, it's like, well, that's interesting. That's, that's fucked. Like, that's anytime it. there's those stories where it's like, I survived, like, three fucking crazy, horrible things, and then I had heart failure. It's like... <laughs> well, she was 83 years old, so yeah, at that point... Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not saying it wasn't a life well lived. I'm just... To me, there's something a little disappointing. Quick, put me on a rickety boat. I have to fucking die in a sinking ship. <laughs> like, it's right. just... It yeah, happen. you know, there's only one way I was supposed to go, and it wasn't here... Like, so they put her cask, put her in her casket, and sent it out to sea, and the fucking thing would not sink. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so that's my story. It's just this this Violet Jessup who is a little bit insane, a lot of bit lucky, and like survived three of at least two. That's, of a, the, that's the thing. She doesn't like so. Far, from what you tell, like, there's really nothing in the story where, she, like, she's more just reacting to this shit. Yeah, like, she doesn't not, do anything. It wasn't like a heroic like. She ran through the burning wreckage and grabbed a baby and dove out the port window. The breaking most the she glass did was catch a baby and then immediately lose it. Um, <laughs> right. Let somebody kidnap it. Like, well, yeah. not my problem anymore. So the only other thing that I had written down has nothing to do with her. Is that in the course of reading about her, I came across this. It, it's a conspiracy theory surrounding the Titanic that I don't know. Maybe you've heard of it, but I hadn't. And they call it the exchange theory. And some random dude <laughs> came up with this theory that says that it wasn't actually the Titanic that sunk, but rather the Olympic, the one that had gotten damaged in the in the collision beforehand. And he says they were so similar, and they said what the they said what they really did was because the the British government blamed them for the accident, their insurance company wouldn't pay for the damages, so to recoup the money. They dressed it up as the Titanic and then rebranded the Titanic as the Olympic. And then they intentionally sunk the Titanic so they could collect the insurance money on it. And it's like, I think the Titanic's been so well documented that I, I don't see how you even entertain this conspiracy theory. Yeah, I, I, that's... But it goes that into is, great that detail is about how, like, all the name. There is only like a handful on all these ships because they were all owned by the same, the White Star Line. That's what was stamped all over everything. There's very few places that actually had the name. Sure. And on the Titanic, it was the only one that had the name bolted on the ship instead of engraved into it. So that's his. Oh, well, they did that to put it over the engraving. It's like, yeah, but mm. the letters wouldn't exactly match up, so you'd still see the like. Yeah, and also just like. Insurance is a you know obvious scam or whatever, and it was a pretty common one in everything. This show has proven that. Um, but I just imagine that like probably having successful cruise ships would be in the long run way more profitable than right, right. Like it's You're not a, it having doesn't... your like the one that's even more famous than the one that got in the wreck sink in front of the entire world might be a little damaging to your reputation as a cruise. Yeah. Line. Yeah. You think one to one, it's like we put all this money to build these ships and now we're going to sink one for insurance money. It's like that. I'm not even completely convinced that they didn't get the insurance money. Cause even if you're at fault, you tend to still get the insurance. If as long as it was an accident and you didn't, unless you went fucking cheap again. Or, well, that's you didn't get the good plan. <laughs> but, I mean, his, this theory even went in to say, like, oh, and what they, they had all these boats out there waiting with their lights turned off to scoop up the survivors because, you know, they weren't going to kill a bunch of people intentionally. But they didn't actually hit the iceberg because there's no way an iceberg could have sunk something like the Titanic. They accidentally ran into one of these ships that had its lights off, and that's what sunk it. Yeah. And it's like, but there, I've seen photos of the iceberg with the, like, black scar scrape mark down the side where the boat yeah hit it that like, fucking iceberg just bragging about so, right. like i'll fuck up what, any ship that comes near me it's like fuck you iceberg I we'll, we'll put co2 when, in the air how about that fucker melt your I, ass I love when anybody tries to like come up with a conspiracy theory and then has to write off like blatant evidence against it that's like 
all over the place. It's like that. Like I said, I mean, there's a photo of the, and then like anybody that says an iceberg couldn't sink a big ship. It's like, have you ever tried to fucking bite into an ice cube? Now picture an ice cube. That's like 4 billion times bigger than that. <laughs> like, yeah. If you're a fucking wimp, I buy ice cubes all the time, man. I'm eating them right now. I eat a big bag of ice cubes before every show. You can get through them, but you can see how hard an ice cube is. Just like, I don't know what this, like this picture of, Oh, it's an iceberg. It's ice. It's fragile. It's like, uh, so I've what had you're, to fucking so what you're my... saying is we need to make our ships have like ships. teeth. Right. With way, like mouths that open. Or just like tape dogs around them. Cause my dog loves ice cubes and she'll chew the shit out of them. So like, if you just yeah. tape a bunch of dogs around the outside of the ship, Maybe give them life vests so that... In, like, I bring you leashes. two new ships, the Titanic and the Ice Chomper. <laughs> arf, arf. <laughs> it's just a, like, chain chomp from Mario. Oh, that would be sweet. I'd, That'd be pretty I'd rad. on that, yeah. So, that's all I have. It, it was just, I came across it and I thought, it's very interesting. And, it, and again, it's one of these that is very well documented. It's not one of these, like, well, I, we heard about this woman that might have been aboard these ship, you know... Ship logs at that time were very detailed, and they yeah. know who was and wasn't on them, and she very much was. Now, I did have to wonder that, like, after the being on these three things, now they were all things that, like, you couldn't really realistically tie to, like, an inside job like you were joking about, but you have to wonder, like, if she got questioned, like... Absolutely not. Uh, you know, <laughs> but I'm I'm still hung up on this lovely idea that like global warming like modern global warming is just humanity's revenge for the titanic <laughs> <laughs> like we're just trying to melt shit because fuck ice yeah take that make us look stupid when we say ship's never gonna sink it never sinks bitch <laughs> that's that's what's funny out of these three unsinkable ships two of them never completed a transatlantic journey yeah it is well now, like I said, the the Britannic that sunk during the war, and they say that it was kind of a, I won't say a freak accident, because planting water mines isn't an accident, but they weren't specifically targeting it. That's a, the, like... Uh, you you that hear gets, some it, stories about the war, though, where it's like, it, it's not necessarily an accident that a mine would do its job, but we have dropped shit where we didn't mean to before. Well, true, like... <laughs> It, it could have very well been a British, like a an allied mine, and they're just they don't want to admit yeah, it. It's like whoops, shit! Like we dropped a nuclear bomb in like Carolina or something, <laughs> and it did, and it just didn't blow up. Like, yeah, hey, you know how fucking lucky, like, <laughs> like it, that would have fucked the entire country up, and they were just like, oh, whoops, left the door open. <laughs> Yeah, that was it. I remember watching that. I saw a show on that. And that was an interesting, like, because it was, it, it's like you said about, like, just people getting complacent or boastful, where it's like, well, we've got, like, a 20 stage redundant system, so you can't accidentally drop a nuclear bomb. Oops. We have a three layer <laughs> of duct tape policy that's sure to prevent any accident. Fuck, it tore. <laughs> I knew we should have gone five layers. I lobbied for it. This is duct tape. We, sh- we should have only needed two. But, uh, so that's what I've got this week. Uh, cool. Sinking boats. It kind of fits in for me with my, like, I've been doing a lot of reading about wreck diving and stuff. So reading about shipwrecks was yeah interesting. Well, yeah. So, then, uh... I just got distracted because there's a giant warning sticker on this lighter that I'm playing with. And I peeled it off and there's a second secret warning sticker underneath it. So my next show next week might be about secret warning stickers on lighters. Like, I think I just uncovered a conspiracy on my own. And you take that sticker off, there's a key that opens a <laughs> that opens a secret door in your house behind the bookshelf. This, I ho- I'm hoping under the second sticker it just says, just kidding, burn and play with this however you want. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I knew it. Fire's not dangerous. Anyway. So, yeah, so yes, come back next week for the shipwreck that is the the non essential podcast. <laughs> um, we'll have more more good shit for you, more random musings from the internet. Yep. Bye bye. Toodles.